Good morning, Derek Watson, Angry Dentist here, Friday the 10th of March. Gonna get the date right today. Lovely sunny day. I'm only working the morning this morning. My, uh, I've been promising to go out for a drink with my technicians and uh, they are, who, who, they literally work in the unit next door to me. I've got a slightly unusual practice in that it's based in an innovation centre. It's a sort of a, well it's an innovation centre. <laughs> uh, it's like an industrial estate type setup where they, it's all sort of uh, steel and uh, breeze block walls. And um, <clears throat> we have uh, three surgeries of which only two are in use and uh, they're on raised floors like a bit like uh, you get at an exhibition you know where they come in and they they put in a false floor and then they put the surgery on the top so all the services can run underneath and that's how my surgery works it's a sort of um it's very utilitarian but it's quite functional and it's not too tricky to take the floor up and fix a leak if we get a leak etc etc so yeah so uh, i've been uh, promising to go out for a drink with these guys because they are it's funny you know when I've got time to go out for lunch they don't and vice versa so we said well we, we definitely got to sit down and get together so I was going to talk a bit about technicians and uh, how their role has changed over the time that I've been in practice which is sort of since the late 70s uh, so getting off for 40 years now and uh, technicians used to have quite a sort of historically obviously the dentists were technicians I mean that's how we arose we we uh, did the technical work we did the clinical work and we did the technical work and then uh, what happened was the clinical work became more profitable so we delegated the technical work to other people and um, sorry screwdriver and uh, and so the two sort of uh, came were separated and um, in the early days it was possible for technicians to own dental uh, surgeries and uh, that that proved to be a bit of a disaster oh, this road it goes mostly into the Sun as you're probably finding out in these very clear sort of spring days the um, in the morning there's very little cloud cover so the Sun's very bright yeah, so uh, <clears throat> technicians owned uh, dental surgeries, and it was a bad. It went. All, it wasn't very sour because the technicians uh, put undue pressure on the clinicians to do um, technical work. That you know, that, that you know, to send the owner in effect technical work, and so there was a conflict of interest there that was recognised, and it then became illegal for a technician to be a majority shareholder in a dental surgery, um, and then then completely you know what they say about people who don't study the past being condemned to repeat the mistakes um, that was then reversed recently because there was a tremendous pressure to uh, release the sort of the, the perceived stranglehold that dentists had on dental surgery I know it sounds ridiculous but you know they wanted to open up the franchise to anybody and their grandmother to own a surgery to sort of uh, to remove the shortage of dentists and all they did was they reintroduced this conflict that uh, was was well recognized as a bad idea but that's not really the thrust of what I was going to talk about it's really about the, the whole process of doing dentistry that involves technical work and by that really I'm just going to concentrate on crowns and bridges and dentures because they are the two main types of technical work now um, when I qualified in 1981 started work in 1982 it took two weeks to make a crown and it took two and it took four weeks to make a denture and as far as I know it still takes 40 years later two weeks to make a crown and four weeks to make a denture and that's there's a couple of reasons behind that one is that most surgeries don't have labs located on the premises so the whole thing has to go off and it either goes off by post or if it's a local lab they come and collect it in a car and, it, and usually it's the technician who comes and collects it or someone and it is so inefficient the whole the whole system um, 
And the other reason is that um, technicians like, like to work on a buffer system. That is, they don't like to be hanging around doing nothing. So they like to have like a, a row of stuff on the shelf that's still waiting to be done, you know, so that they can work at whatever the pace they work at. And then as soon as they finish a job, they just take the next job off the shelf, etc., etc. So they've got a, a buffer, what we now understand from computers is, is called a buffer. And they, that buffer gives them some reassurance. It's, it doesn't necessarily increase the amount of work they do. In fact, I would argue it probably decreases it. But it um, means that they don't, they don't sit around doing nothing thinking, oh my God, how am I going to feed the kids? Now, in order to have a buffer, you have to put back your delivery date. Um, so you've always got people waiting on you. Um, so in effect, what you're doing is you're just turning it around so that they're waiting on you rather than you're waiting on them by buying in, by being inefficient, by, by taking longer than you need to to do the work. And that's why nothing's changed. And also because there's no pressure within the profession for change either. They're, National Health Service is work works down to a fee. It doesn't work up to a standard. So there's no incentive for improvements. No no dentist is going to say I'm going to get, you know, I'm getting paid what whatever 75 quid for a denture or whatever. I'm going to try and do it twice as fast even if that costs more. No NHS dentist ever said that. Um, so there's there's absolutely no impetus for innovation and and as a result for the last 40 years there hasn't been any at all. Um, in the private sector, you know, we've had things like uh, CAD CAM design and uh, industrial milling machines come along, but these are in places like Germany and America, not uh, not at all in any sort of state-run system where, as I say, you're, you're, it's a sort of a lowest common denominator type approach. Now, that's not to say that these things can't be done quickly. Um, you can make a crown in a day, easily, um, providing you know you do the preparation in the morning and uh, get the impression off and then you can temporise, the technician makes the crown over lunch and you fit it in the afternoon. No problem at all, happens all the time in Harley Street where the, the uh, sort of lab's around the corner and you just literally run the, run the lab work around the corner and the technician runs it back. Dentures, I used to think, actually would did, did take longer, and that's true because they do have like a reasonably lengthy processing period. So, you know, how can you make a denture in a day? And the answer is you can, yes. Um, Marcus, my technician, has said that he can make a denture in a day. Again, you have to start early and you might finish a bit late, but for someone who wants a denture and wants it urgently, it can be done. And I'm not talking about one that's made out of cold cured acrylic. I'm talking about a proper, properly processed denture that goes through all the stages of uh, bite, try and fit. So, where did the technicians go wrong? You know, wh why, why are they now so out of where they need to be in terms, in relation to the market, in terms of making money and everything? I think you need to look at the, under the old system, the pre-1990 FIFA item system, it was a high volume, uh, low cost, low quality, repeat restorative system. And it produced a lot of dentures and a lot of crowns and bridges and a lot of fillings, etc. It produced a lot of everything. It was, any FIFA item system produces a lot of whatever there's a fee for. And you could say that there was a flourishing laboratory industry and they, they would probably say that there was you know and there's certainly far more technicians working doing far more work than there are at the moment and then somebody you know Michael Watson <coughs> cough cough no relation um, in conjunction with the Department of Health com comes up with this idea of units of dental activity which is a sort of a flat rate fee where you get paid the same uh, amount however much work you've done now under that sort of system, of course, you're going to have a... It's going to change all the levers, isn't it? The motivational levers. And so you're going to be doing as little as possible of everything. So you went, we went from 70 miles an hour forward 
to 70 miles an hour reverse. It's from a system that rewarded us for producing as much of everything as we possibly could to a system that rewarded us for doing as little of everything as we possibly could. And the main people who suffered uh, under this change, this rapid gear crunching reversal of systems, were the technicians. They went from a system where they were required to a system where they were not required. And they knew that. They knew that the UDA system was going to be a disaster for them. They, they saw it coming. And the Department of Health uh, knew that the part of their plan was to do far, far less advanced crown and bridge work and, uh, and dentures. And so they, they had a problem with the technicians in effect, that the technicians were up in arms. There was a lot of resistance to the new contract from the technicians, um, Dental Laboratories Association, etc. And the way they got round it, which was not really clever, I mean it was just the way that they work and, and, and have and this is a tried and trusted formula in government, is that they gave the technician's leader, a guy called Richard something or other, I can't remember what his name was, but anyway, he was offered uh, a place on the General Dental Council. And the, not that the General Dental Council is in any way a policy making body, which made it more stupid, it made it all the more surreal, because he was offered a seat on the General Dental Council, but, and, and it was sort of sold to him and the technicians on the basis of, look, you know, we're not trying to get rid of you technicians, you know, you technicians, you're important people. You are, we value your services. Don't think that we, uh, you know, we're, we're sort of trying to uh, in any way downplay your role in the National Health Service. Uh, and to show that to, as a sign of our good faith, we are going to put your guy on the General Dental Council where he can, he can sit there and be right at the, <clears throat> the molten heart, <coughs> excuse me, of, um, of, uh, of the discussion of, of the changes, the regulations and the statutes and on an equal basis with, with the dentists, you know, absolutely ele you know, elected, protected and able to join in the debate and put the technician's point of view and everything. And oh, by the way, uh, you know, just uh, by the way, we won't really be needing your work anymore, you know, technicians, technical work, <laughs> that, you know, thanks for it. Cheerio and thanks for all the cheese sort of thing. And they fell for it. You know, I mean, hook, line and sinker. And so the, uh, there then was a divide between the dentists who didn't like the new system and the technicians who didn't like the new system but then all of a sudden did like the new system. And that was the point, that was the tipping point at which the, the dental technical profession really went went over the edge because they just they fell off a cliff in terms of volume and uh, they were weakened so much that they you know uh, especially with the, the rise of the corporates and the corporates were trying to cut costs because the only way that you can make any I mean not that they make any profit but the only way that you might make any profit as a corporate is by economies of scale. So how do the corporates make money? They put the screws on everybody. They put the screws on their suppliers, they put the screws on the payroll, the, the associates, they put the screws on the technicians and they start doing things, they start saying things like, you know, uh, you, you know, you're going to have to cut your prices by 5% or we're going to have you're going to, you know you're going to lose the contract. It's a big contract, and for the smaller the smaller technicians, uh, you know, who can't survive without the contract, they're just uh, going to the sort of suicide tendering phase, where eventually they um, they uh, they can't survive anymore. And I think if the average NHS patient could see conditions under which their dentures are now made or their crowns the the plaster all over the walls you know the the massive great vats of horrible 
milky water in which their dentures are boiled up to, to, to be finished and look at the sort of the care and attention that goes into it and, and you know just looking at when you go into a lab now you look at the quality of the work on the walls and it's not you know I honestly I do not blame the technicians for this I blame them for a couple of things but I don't blame them really for the quality of the clinical work I think that if they had been treated properly then they are they do genuinely want to do good quality work but they can't because they're not being given good quality impressions they're not being given good quality bites or uh, try-ins where, the, the, where the bite is correct on the try-in so many every every technician you talk to will have 10 stories about a dentist who said uh, you know where, where the technician has said this can't be correct on the bite this absolutely can't be and the dentist has said well just do your best and I'll just grind the hell out of it when when we fit it you know this is how desperate everyone's got what I do blame the technicians for though is and is trying to you know they had to jump the shark as they say in the states and make this painful transition into private the private sector and you know many dentists have done it and we had the same sort of angst ridden moments years ago about whether or not we could we could survive and you know, whether we had to stay in the National Health Service no matter what and uh, we, we painfully learned that uh, we don't have to stay in the health service no matter what but I still don't think the technicians have learned this lesson I think they you know very very many of them still think that they can't see a way out of the way that they've always worked they don't understand about vertical markets they don't understand about on sales or marketing or their products or whatever so a lot of them can do stuff which is valuable to our patients I mean for example the um, you know different materials uh, sintered ceramic crowns and uh, I mean even something as simple as just saying look if you've got a difficult shade send the patient up the up the up the, the lab and what we'll do we'll do a shade match in the lab for you I used to say to my technicians look tell me what you can do I can't sell to my patients anything that you haven't even told me that you can do or that you could do but you've decided that you don't why 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 bother there's so much stuff that we could do everybody is time poor at the moment they tend to be relatively have more money than time and so they want everything done quickly and they want they want these services they don't want to have a crown done and then the, the lab you know the dentist say well I'll, I'm sorry it's not the right color I'll send it back to the lab and then you get into an argument with the lab over who should pay for it and it's you know the whole thing is just a massive cluster you know what and and it's, it hasn't changed since for 40 years my crown and bridge technician about uh, 20 years ago would do um, a rush job if you asked him to. I rang up and I said to him, I need, you know, patient, my patients would like to have their crowns done quicker. Can you do it? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have like um, the service where, uh, you know, if a patient's going on holiday or something, we have dentists ringing us up all the time saying, can you do a quick job and he said yeah we, we can easily do that no you know I said how much and he said well it, he said normally if it's just like one we do it as a favor but you know if it's if you want it as a service I don't know what say 30% extra and he thought you know this is I'll, I'll overprice this you know I'll, I'll bung it up 30% extra you know way I'll go for it and I thought well let me think and that means paying what 65 pounds or something instead of 50 for a crown I was charging 300 for so I said yeah yeah we'll do that then can we do that or he said yeah what's the name of the job and I said no all the jobs all the jobs I want all the jobs done like by return so uh, he's like oh okay okay so uh, we started sending them off on the Monday and getting them back on the Wednesday or the Thursday or whatever and it was great patients loved it and I you know I mean I can charge I could charge a 30% premium on the 200 or 300 quid I was charging so there's no I, I was totally unaffected by his uh, fee structure 
but then after about two or three months I got a phone call and um, he's like oh Derek you know those your crowns and I said yeah he said well I've got a bit of a problem he said the, 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 the guys are whinging a bit about doing them and I thought you know well really I mean you know whinging about getting 30% extra for doing the work he said yeah the problem is you know when your one of your jobs comes in and I say to him look you've got to drop everything and, and put this one at the front of the queue because it's one of Derek's and he's he wants it done quick and then they've had to it's completely disrupted their leisurely workflow their <laughs> two-week workflow you know and um, so he said you know I know I said we could do it but he said if it's all the same to you he said uh, do you mind if we just don't do it you know can you just go back to the two weeks whatever and, and save yourself the money and I'm like well you know I didn't have any choice so I said all right then and that was 20 years ago and that boys and girls is why the dental technician industry is in such a state have a lovely day I'll see you tomorrow